This video is brought to you by Storyblocks Video. Hello guys, Jannik here for Cinecam.net and welcome to another Copycat Friday. A series where we recreate effects from famous movies and music videos. And this week, Copycat Friday is completely dedicated to Star Wars. Personally, I'm a big Star Wars fan and have been as long as I can remember. So of course, I was super happy to see the new trailer for the Rise of the Skywalker movie. Seeing all those old shots again really hit a nostalgic spot for me and will probably make me binge watch them all again. And to be really honest, the old three movies were the best. That's where it all started, but I also love the special effects from the older movies. Yeah, I know, they aren't that super realistic as the newer Star Wars movies and also not as spectacular, but I love the practical side of all the effects. And this will be in fact the theme for this week's Copycat Friday. Practical Star Wars effects. We could do another tutorial on how to make a lightsaber, but that would be boring. So we are going to look how you can create a Star Wars-like effect without 3D models or any plugins. Just some clever camera work and some preparation. But before we are going to create a cool effect, let's talk some more about Star Wars. And of course, also about our sponsor, Storyblocks Video. This is an online library with galactic proportions and it keeps on growing. You can find multiple video assets here from outer space footage to futuristic After Effects templates. Perfect for your new Star Wars project. And the best thing about Storyblocks Video is that you can download unlimited amount of video assets for one single price per year. If you want to start downloading right away, check out the first link in the description below. Now back in the 70s, when the first Star Wars movie was made, the practical special effects were quite crucial. In that time, the CGI wasn't that great. But George Lucas and his team did a really creative job to still create amazing effects. An example of such an effect is C-3PO and R2-D2. In the current movie business, they would probably make the robots in 3D and animate them. Most of the time, this would be cheaper and much faster. Or another current day possibility, build the robots for real. As they did with The Force Awakens. Here the BB-8 droid was a real robot that could be operated remotely. But George Lucas did something completely different in the 70s. He made costumes for actors. So the two robots you see in the older movies are really people with a lot of metal around them. Now speaking of robots, there's another fun fact about a different robot. The 80s 80s. You know, those giant walking tanks that look like a dinosaur? Well, they are actually based on an elephant. They're walking at least. When they were designing the AT 80s they studied the movements of an Asian elephant. These movements were then used for the movement of the AT 80s But elephants also had another use in the movies. Do you know the sound of the famous TIE fighters? Well, this sound you're now hearing was made of a trumpeting cry of an elephant combined with cars streaking past. I must say, I find this all super cool. The fact that you can create such cool effects with simple solutions. Which also leads me to the next effect from Star Wars. Puppets and miniatures. Star Wars really perfected the use of them in film. Most of the vehicles and spaceships in older movies are miniatures. They shoot these in front of a blue screen and use motion control to combine them with other shots. Well, this is now exactly what we are going to show you. How you can create a cool scene with just a miniature model and some clever camera work. So the first thing what you are going to need is a miniature. We went for the Millennium Falcon as we want to stay in the Star Wars theme. But you can do this with every miniature you want. Next, let's place our camera and frame the shot. We went for a normal wide shot on a tripod. After we are ready, let's take the empty shot to place the miniature in. As you can see, we made sure that no cars were in the shot which will give no reference points towards size of other vehicles. Okay, next up is the miniature and its movement. We are going to film it in the exact same location as our empty. This will make sure that the lighting matches. For the movement, we are going to use a motion control slider, which will give us complete control over the movement and will make it much easier. However, you can also use fishing wire if you don't have a motion control slider. It will be harder, but it will work. So position your miniature quite close to the lens and align the perspective with the background. Do this for your begin position and for your end position. After we have our movement planned out, let's add a green screen in the background. Now the last thing before you can shoot is the aperture. Because we are so close to the lens, we have a shallow depth of field. 
By closing the aperture, the depth of field will become bigger. This will make the whole Millennium Falcon sharp. Ok, make your shot and let's load them both in Premiere Pro. The first thing you can do now is place the empty on the first track and the miniature shot on track number 4. Now let's remove the green. Within the effects library, search for the ultra key effect and drag that to the miniature shot. In the effects control panel, you can now take the color selector and select the green. If needed, you can do some extra adjustments in the settings. After this, you will have your miniature keyed out, for the biggest part. The rest you can remove with a simple mask that you can animate so it follows your ship. Then the only thing you need to do is scale and position it to really match your scene. As you can see, the clip is too long. This is because the movement is very slow. To fix this, we can use the speed ramp technique. So right click on the FX button from the miniature clip, select time remapping and then speed. Look for the point where your spaceship almost lands on the ground and here you can create a keyframe on the clip with the pen tool. You can already pull the keyframe open to the left to give it a smooth ease in. Then take the line on the left of the keyframe and drag it all the way up to speed it up. This will already make the movement fast, but still not fast enough. So if you want it faster, you have to nest the clip and do all the speed ramping again. After all this, you will already have a cool shot of your ship landing. So now let's add some details. The first thing we are going to add is the heat radiating from the ship. To create this, duplicate the empty shot to track number 2. From the effects library, you can now drag the turbulent displace effect to the duplicate. In the effects controls, you can now play around with the settings. We just increased the amount and decreased the size. But most importantly, we animated the evolution over the entire clip. This will make your heat waves move and make it more realistic. However, the heat waves are now over the complete footage. So next go to the opacity property and take the pen tool. Create a mask to single out some waves under the ship with a simple rectangle. After you make your mask, feather it a bunch and enable the animation for the mask pad. Now go further in time and let your mask follow your ship. If the heat waves are maybe a little bit too hard, you can always lower the opacity for them. Next, let's do the shadow. In your project panel, you can create a new item, which will be a color mat. Then drag this color mat to the third track. First, we are going to add the ramp effect to the color mat to give it a gradient. In the ramp setting, you can make the start color a dark blue and the end color light gray. Also change the ramp shape to radial ramp. We do this because the center of the shadow will always be darker than the outside. Next, move further in time where your spaceship landed. Here you can create an ellipse mask on the color mat under the ship. Again, feather it a bunch, set the blending mode to hard light and maybe even lower the opacity. Now because your ship flies in, the shadow also needs to come in. So on the point where your ship is down, you can enable the animation for the mask pad, feather and opacity. Here the shadow needs to be the hardest and the darkest. So when going back in time, when your ship is in the air, the shadow needs to be bigger, softer and lighter. You can animate these three settings to the extent that you find realistic, which will give you this result. Now to really sell the effect, you can add some dust waves or smoke and of course a lens flare. Because what's a current Star Wars movie without any lens flares? And if you really want to top it off, you can also add a fake handheld motion to it all. Just simply use an adjustment layer above everything and add a fake handheld preset of ours to the adjustment layer. And that's it! Busy day. Very busy. I know, right? See you tomorrow, Jenik. See you tomorrow. Lorenzo, why are you waiting? Oh, my car broke down and I got this weird rental. <laughs> that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Also, what do you think about our recent extra effects we put in the copycat tutorials? If you want, you can let us know in the comments below. But for this week, I would like to thank you for watching. Thank you Storyblocks video for the support. And like always, may the force be with you. Or stay creative. Sith Lord, Jedi. Sith Lord, hmm. Jedi. I'm going for the Jedi today. I'm more like Chewbacca. Oh.